and welcome to the 89th annual Iowa State University Honors and Awards Recognition Ceremony. I'm Kathy Peterson, Chair of the ISU Alumni Association Board of Directors, and I am honored to be speaking with you tonight. For nearly 90 years, this tradition of recognizing outstanding Cyclones and Friends has been an eagerly awaited event. The collaborative partnership between the seven colleges of Iowa State University, the Memorial Union, and the ISU Alumni Association is a long and crucial one. In these current times of challenges and hopes, we're virtually gathering to celebrate the spirit of Iowa State in each and every awardee. If the year 2020 has taught us anything, it is that we must take the time to celebrate, and we must take the time to connect, and we must take the time to recognize the kindness, the tenacity, and the wonderful ingenuity that surrounds us. Thank you for joining us for this celebration tonight. And now, I'd like to introduce the Laura and Russ Talbot Endowed President and CEO of the ISU Alumni Association, Jeff Johnson. Thank you, Kathy, and greetings Cyclones and honored guests. First, I extend a cardinal and gold congratulations to you, our awardees. You are a shining example of how Cyclones everywhere are making their communities, the state of Iowa, and the world a better place. So thank you, Cyclones, for your work, your talents, and your drive. And now I have the pleasure of welcoming Iowa State University President, Wendy Winterstein. Wendy. Thank you, Jeff. Greetings from Iowa State University. I'm so pleased to offer my congratulations to all of our wonderful honorees. I wish we could be together in person, celebrating you and your incredible achievements. I look forward to the time when conditions allow us together together to share memories and stories of your time here on campus. As I think about the past year and the historic challenges and changes we've faced, I am grateful and hopeful for a bright future. My gratitude and hope is rooted in the belief that our mission and purpose at Iowa State University has never been stronger. My gratitude and hope is further strengthened by our students. They have shown incredible resilience and determination over this past year to continue on the path to earn their Iowa State degree. As alumni, you know that path navigating your own challenges and obstacles to reach graduation. But there is always a common theme in our alumni stories, and that is the transformational power of an Iowa State education. Whether our alumni succeed in industry or business or community or family, they make a huge difference in the world and impact everyone they touch. One of my great joys as Iowa State's president is hearing about our students' goals for how they will use their Iowa State education to make our world a better place. My next greatest joy is seeing those students join our community of alumni and become the leaders, innovators, and achievers they always dreamed of. Every year, Iowa State opens the doors of education and opportunity widely to students from every county in Iowa, every state nationwide, and more than 100 countries around the globe. This year, more than 20% of our students are the first in their family to attend college. What a delight it is to watch them explore their passion and work to reach their full potential. I know many of you were once like that. You had a dream that the future could be better and Iowa State University could put you on a path to achieve that if you worked hard and stayed in college. As president, I get to experience all of that extraordinary potential and energy in our students, and then I see it reflected and expressed in our alumni 10, 20, 50 years later. You cannot imagine the joy that brings me. Feeling that joy helps to energize me through all the challenges of the past year and to see the promise of a bright future. As president, I will continue to lift up every aspect of this great institution to help these students make a positive difference in the world, to help this generation of students achieve the greatness of Iowa State's past generations. You, our alumni and friends, represent the Iowa State adventure, your innovative spirit, your perseverance, and your core values. 
You all have made a difference and you continue to bring pride to Iowa State. I am so proud of each and every one of you. On behalf of our great university, thank you and congratulations. I would now like to introduce Dan Robeson, Endowed Dean's Chair of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Your College of Agriculture and Life Sciences continues to be ranked among the top in the world. The college has built a culture of excellence in serving our land-grant mission by innovating academically, advancing science, engaging globally, and serving Iowans. Today we gather to honor five impressive awardees who include a community champion and expert in banking, a national leader in the agricultural diversity and inclusion, a top national ag media executive, a global leader in investment management and innovation, and an innovative young entrepreneur. This group epitomizes what we call the Cal's advantage, advocating for what you believe, being innovative in all that you do, excelling in your area of expertise, and being a leader in your personal and professional accomplishments. Please help me congratulate and honor Jeff, Duane, Roger, Betsy, and Colin, our extraordinary 2020 honorees. Jeff Plagey serves as superintendent of the Iowa Division of Banking. Jeff's impressive career spans more than 40 years, impacting all levels of Iowa's banking industry. He has served as chief executive officer for four Iowa banking institutions and his expertise is well known on a national level, including service on the boards of the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, the American Bankers Mutual Insurance, and the American Bankers Association. Jeff's leadership and service also extend to his community, where he has served on the board of directors for Northwest Financial Corporation and its subsidiaries, Delta Dental of Iowa, and the American Red Cross Central Iowa Chapter. Congratulations, Jeff. Duane Goldman, co-founder and CEO of the National Black Growers Council, is one of the nation's leaders in diversity and inclusion in agriculture. While attending graduate school at Iowa State, Duane had a huge impact on our diversity and inclusion efforts by recruiting students of color and co-founding our Minorities in Agriculture, Natural Resources, and Related Sciences student organization. As a professional, Duane manages his family farm operation and had a highly successful career in the agricultural seed and chemical industries, retiring from Bear Crop Science in 2019. He is currently serving his third term on the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Advisory Committee on Minority Farmers and serves on several other boards supporting resources and opportunities for people of color. Congratulations, Duane. As chairman of FCT Group of Companies, Roger Carlson is a driving force in the global investment management industry. After founding FCT Group, Roger grew the company into one of the largest independent market-making and proprietary trading groups in the world. A generalist philanthropist, Roger founded the Carlson Family Foundation to manage his charitable contributions and provide a research vehicle for donors wishing to make informed philanthropic decisions. Roger's support of College of Ag and Life Sciences students is impressive, serving as a host to Iowa State study abroad groups in the United Kingdom and helping to establish an undergraduate scholarship. Thank you and congratulations to Roger. A pioneer in agricultural communications, Betsy Fries, Executive Director for Meredith Agri-Media and Successful Farming, is a nationally acclaimed media executive and industry leader. During her tenure at Meredith Agri-Media, she built the Successful Farming and the Living the Country Life brands from beloved hard copy publications to national multifaceted media powerhouses incorporating web, radio, and television. Betsy is a committed mentor to aspiring journalists and communicators, supervising Meredith Agri-Media's apprentice program, and she serves as a respected resource and supporter for Iowa State classes and student organizations. Congratulations to Betsy. Colin Hurd's path to entrepreneurship began as a student participating in programs offered through our college's Agricultural Entrepreneurship Initiative. During his undergraduate studies, he founded Agricultural Concepts and developed Tractil, a planter attachment designed to minimize soil compaction. After selling the technology, 
Colin joined the inaugural cohort of the Iowa State University's Startup Factory and founded SmartAg, a company focused on commercializing autonomous farming solutions. In 2019, SmartAg was acquired by Raven Industries, where Colin now serves as the company's strategic initiatives manager and continues to innovate, grow, and develop technologies to advance the agricultural industry. Congratulations to Colin. I would now like to introduce David Spaulding, the Reisbeck Endowed Dean of the Ivy College of Business. Thank you, Dean Robeson. At Ivy, we are known for being a college on the move, and there are some very good reasons for that. In 2017, we became the first named college at Iowa State University. We continuously evaluate our programs, innovate, and add new opportunities that fit current market demand and anticipate future business needs. During this global pandemic, our staff continued to support students in finding internships and full-time jobs. For the most recent graduating cohort, the average starting salary was more than $52,000 per year. We have the highest rankings in our program's history in U.S. News and World Report. Our undergraduate program is ranked in the top 13% of all accredited programs. Our full-time MBA was ranked in the top 10% of all accredited programs in 2020 and the top 11% in 2021. Iowa State University was ranked number 11 in North America in undergraduate entrepreneurship programs. Our part-time MBA has been voted best in Des Moines the last three years. Our supply chain management program is ranked number seven in the nation. In November, we opened our 45,000 square foot expansion to the Jardine Business Building. As you can see, we are a college on the move. Today, I'm pleased to be with you to honor five special people who are very important to the Ivy College of Business. Sherry Bandel's passion for numbers and travel merged perfectly for an impressive lifetime career with Cargill. Her Iowa State accounting degree has provided unique opportunities with Cargill, allowing her to explore many roles and travel the world on company business. Her relationship with the Ivy College of Business has been one of service. Sherry has devoted 15 years as a member of the Department of Accounting Executive Advisory Council. In that role, she provides valuable expertise in her field, which helps set the direction of our Department of Accounting. Sherry is an avid Cyclone fan and says her years at Iowa State were among the best in her life. Congratulations, Sherry. Craig Hart's accounting degree has taken him on a steady incline that led to a long career filled with success. After working for 20 years at Tyson, Craig followed his dream. He was hired as the Chief Financial Officer at Packers Sanitation Services. Craig and his wife Cheryl are devoted to our students. They supported the newly completed Jardine Business Building expansion because they believe in the college's mission and vision. They want to support student success. But there's more to Craig than career achievement. Many people don't know this, but Craig and his wife Cheryl have been foster parents to more than 70 children. It's one example of just how much they care about future generations. Congratulations, Craig. You may recognize the name Tina Fries Decker. She was on the stage at this event in 2016 when she received the Iowa State University Outstanding Young Alumni Award. That's one of many awards Tina has received during her career. Tina knew from an early age how to launch a successful career. She took all the right classes and earned all the right degrees, including two from another institution in Iowa that we don't have time to mention. Her education prepared her well for her current role as CEO of a major health system based in Western Michigan. In addition to her career achievements, Tina is working with us to develop a new master's program in the area of healthcare administration. Thanks to her expertise, this will benefit our students and their future employers. Congratulations, Tina. Paula Norby laughs when she explains she never thought she would go into the family business. Not only did she go into the family business, she's currently the owner and controller of Norby Distributing Company. It all started with one farm supply store, but as you will see in today's program, the company has grown. Paula is devoted to supporting students at the Ivy College of Business. She supports scholarships for women in business and also for accounting students to help them succeed as they start their careers. 
Paula recently said, to me, an education opens the world to so many different opportunities, and it's something no one can ever take away from you. Congratulations, Paula. You can't live in or visit Ames, Iowa without hearing the Hunziker name. A lifelong resident of Ames, Dean Hunziker is a broker and owner of Hunziker & Associates, a family-owned business since 1952. Dean graduated from Ames High School and initially enrolled at Iowa State, unsure of his future. Even though he chose not to graduate, Hunziker is a strong supporter of the university and the Ivy College of Business. Dean was instrumental in helping us develop a Master of Real Estate Development program for working professionals. He's a member of two Ivy College of Business Executive Advisory Councils, our Master of Real Estate Development program and the Department of Management and Entrepreneurship. As a member of those councils, he provides his professional expertise to college leaders so student curriculum can meet the needs of industry. Dean's dedication to Iowa State and the Ivy College of Business makes him the perfect fit for the Russ and Jardine Award. Congratulations, Dean. I would now like to introduce Luis Rico Gutierrez, Dean of the College of Design. Thank you, Dean Spaulding. Herb Simon, an American economist, political scientist, and cognitive psychologist who won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1978, the year the College of Design opened at Iowa State University, defined design as the activity responsible for devising courses of action aimed at changing existing situations into preferred ones. Artists, planners, and designers study the past, question the present, and imagine a better future for everyone. Our students, faculty, and staff in the College of Design question and reimagine everything, from physical spaces and products to new methods of expression and mechanisms for interaction, so they become the foundation of our preferred collective future. Tonight, I'm proud to recognize six outstanding alumni who, through their innovative art, exemplary design, community activism and advocacy, and support of the next generation of leaders in our professions, continue to question what exists, to imagine what is possible, and to create a better world for us all. Anwright Ao and King Ao were students in the College of Design at the same time, but did not meet and marry until they were both established professionals. In 1993, they co-founded Two Ao Limited, a jewelry design studio and art gallery in West Des Moines' historic Valley Junction. Anne designs costume and one-of-a-kind jewelry and curates the gallery's collection of artwork by artists worldwide. She co-produces Gallery Night twice a year in Valley Junction. Anne has also served on the College of Design Dean's Advancement Council and the Art and Visual Culture Advisory Council. King is a freelance merchandising photographer for William Sonoma and the founder of Studio Ao, a multi-design practice specializing in visual designs. In fall 2020, the Ao's created the Design United Award, a scholarship for students that celebrates their contributions to diversity, inclusion, and social justice in the college, the university, and the greater design community. Thank you, Anne and King, and congratulations. Our Design Achievement Awards this year recognize two nationally known Midwestern designers, Susan Hoffman and Rod Cruzy. Susan Hoffman is a highly acclaimed interior designer whose residential designs projects span the United States and the Caribbean. Her work is often featured in major design forums, such as House. A strong advocate and leader within the profession, Susan has served in multiple roles on the board of her regional chapter of the American Society of Interior Designers, including as president. Susan is a tireless supporter of the College of Design and Department of Interior Design, serving on our advisory councils, sponsoring student design competitions and projects, and providing field trip opportunities and other learning experiences for our students. Congratulations, Susan. Rod Cruzy is a national leader in sustainable and regenerative design. His work has won nearly 80 awards from projects that exemplify high performance, beautiful design, and responsible use of natural and financial resources. As a trusted advisor for design excellence, Rod has served on the National Fellows and Awards Juries for the American Institute of Architects and the AIA Committee on the Environment. He shared his valuable insights as a member of our Architecture Advisory Council for many years. Our students now benefit from Rod's experience and expertise in his role as a professor of practice teaching in our Department of Architecture. 
Congratulations, Rod. And now I have the privilege of introducing the inaugural recipients of our newest college award, the Outstanding Young Professional Award, Johnny Alcibar Zuniga. Johnny Alcibar is passionate about community involvement and representation. He goes beyond traditional advocacy to create spaces for people in places where they are not typically seen. For the past decade, Johnny has worked to engage residents in Iowa and the Midwest in civil rights, community development, and career training to expand opportunities for underrepresented populations. In 2019, he was recognized by the Iowa International Center for exemplary leadership and creating a positive impact in the lives of Iowans. He's now a member of the Center's Board of Directors. Congratulations, Johnny. Adrian Nelson is highly experienced in the design of large-scale corporate and commercial projects that serve a diverse and sophisticated client base. She was the project manager for Google's new headquarters in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and the designer for a next-generation office building in Denver, Colorado. Adrian is advancing rapidly as a leader in the architecture profession. She has served on the board of the Connecticut chapter of the American Institute of Architects and is a co-chair of the AIA Connecticut Women in Architecture Committee. She is among the inaugural class of the National AIA Leadership Academy. Congratulations, Adrian. I will now like to introduce my friend and colleague, Sam Easterling, the James L. and Catherine S. Melsa Dean of the College of Engineering. So thank you, Dean Rico Gutierrez. As Dean of the College of Engineering and an alum myself, Cyclone engineers give me much of which to be proud. Our college has played a critical role on our campus and beyond since the earliest days of Iowa State, and our engineers have an enormous impact on society. I'm especially in awe of our unwavering commitment to our mission in the face of challenges. Here on campus, we've launched two new majors, cybersecurity engineering and environmental engineering. Our faculty continue to pioneer research innovation in engineered medicine, new materials, resilient infrastructure, and much more. And we've recently received the American Society for Engineering Education's top award for our efforts in advancing diversity and inclusion. But far beyond Ames, Iowa, all over the world, the Cyclone Engineering family is hard at work transforming technology to improve our lives and the world around us. And now, I'm pleased to introduce you to several of these outstanding engineering leaders and College of Engineering alumni. Sa Chi Mo, has made truly remarkable engineering contributions across the world as a geotechnical engineering designer, educator, and entrepreneur. Zachi founded and is chairman of the board of the MAA Group, which are prominent international engineering consultants who have been vital to the development of Asian economies. Students that Zachi has taught and mentored at the Asian Institute of Technology have gone on to lead many large infrastructure projects across Asia. Between his own technical expertise and those of his students, Zachi's influence is significant and will be long-lasting. For all these accomplishments, Zachi has been named a fellow of numerous engineering societies in the United States, United Kingdom, China, Singapore, Malaysia, and Hong Kong. I'm so pleased to honor Zachi for his contributions to engineering all across the globe. Lori J. Ryerkirk has been named as one of corporate America's most powerful women by Fortune magazine for her three plus decades of success in the energy industry. She's now the chairperson, chief executive officer, and president of Selenese Corporation, a Fortune 500 global chemical and specialty materials company. In her leadership, Lori combines exceptional technical and commercial skills with a strong commitment to safety, environmental, and social excellence. Selenese has been recognized with the highest corporate awards from the EPA and Human Rights Campaign. Prior to Selenese, Lori held senior leadership positions at Shell and Hess and spent 24 years with ExxonMobil, improving operational performance across the U.S. and world. Congratulations, Lori. Edward McGinn is a demonstrated leader in chemical engineering with his eye on the future creating technologies for a sustainable world, and inspiring the next generation of engineers to do the same. As a professor and leader at the University of Notre Dame, Ed has won multiple teaching excellence awards and advised more than 80 undergraduate, graduate, and postdoctoral researchers. And Ed's many students are learning from the best. 
He's a noted research innovator using molecular simulation to develop new technologies based on charged fluids for sustainable energy and environmental application. Ed is a fellow of the AAAS and the American Institute of Chemical Engineers. Congratulations, Ed. Jeff Verhuell is and has been a proven product innovator and senior leader at some of the biggest names in the computing industry. Jeff spent 25 years with IBM, going to work there right after graduation and working his way up to vice president positions. He has also led development of cutting edge computing technologies, including microprocessors and memory and storage components at AMD and SanDisk. Jeff is currently driving the success of Micron's non-volatile memory engineering team, which is made up of 2,500 employees across six countries. The products Jeff oversees make up one third of Micron's revenues. We are fortunate that Jeff lends his exceptional experience and expertise to the College of Engineering by serving on the Dean's Advisory Council. Congratulations, Jeff. Gretchen Kinsella is a construction engineering leader on the rise, quickly moving through the ranks at DPR Construction. In just a few years, she went from intern to now leading the entire DPR business in Arizona. Gretchen's outstanding skills have been recognized by fellow construction industry leaders. She's been named to Arizona's most influential women in real estate list and Arizona's real estate people to know list. Gretchen also serves as a role model to other women in the building industry, sharing her story and serving her community through Greater Phoenix Leadership, Junior League of Phoenix, and on the board of directors for Banner Health. Congratulations, Gretchen. I would now like to introduce Laura Jolly, Dean and Dean's Chair of the College of Human Sciences. Thank you, Dean Easterling. People are at the heart of our innovative work in the College of Human Sciences, influencing food, clothing, and events to health and wellness, education, family life, and communities. To name just a few examples, our students, faculty and staff, and alumni are integrating technology into education, developing solutions to overcome challenges of the pandemic, and enhancing the lives of underrepresented populations. Today, I am proud to honor alumni leading the way in their own professions as they enhance communities, schools, nonprofit organizations, businesses, and government at all levels. They are exceptional ambassadors of the college and the university, expanding human potential and improving people's lives. In the national arena, Marcia Anderson Getting is Cooperative Extension's top expert on estate planning. As professor and Extension Family Economics Specialist, she developed and led estate planning and financial education workshops, reaching more than 50,000 people and in every county and reservation in the state of Montana. Her workshops and nationwide alliances have transformed lives, especially those of women, families, and indigenous people in Montana, the West, and across the United States. She has earned more than 50 top honors for visionary leadership and effective programming. Congratulations, Marcia. Theron Schutte is a premier educational leader whose community-wide initiatives enrich the lives of children, families, and communities, and grow opportunities for historically underserved students. As superintendent of Marshalltown Schools, he has raised funds to improve STEM education, led formation of the Junior Achievement Program, created the Bobcat Pride Student Success Campaign, and expanded an effective summer school program. The Marshalltown District is the first in Iowa to graduate students with a Career and College Readiness Certificate and the first to offer the seal of biliteracy certification. He is a past president of the School Administrators of Iowa and this year was one of three candidates on the ballot to become president-elect 
of the National School Superintendents Association. Congratulations, Theron. Nancy Armbrust's work is so transformative and inspiring that Schreiber Foods, one of the largest dairy product companies in the world, established an award in her name for women who make an indelible impact on their communities. Nancy's amazing community engagement and insight on community needs has been recognized with awards at the city, county, and state levels. She's an avid volunteer advocate for the development and education of children and their families, and served on the Governor's Early Childhood Advisory Council in Wisconsin. She has also served Iowa State on the Foundation Board of Governors, including as Chair of the Board of Directors, as well as leadership on the Human Sciences Dean's Council, and we are grateful. Congratulations, Nancy. Sean Pan is an outstanding academic leader known for strategic, innovative, and transparent leadership delivered with integrity. He's a change agent who has advanced several major urban community colleges to improve the lives and skills of hundreds of thousands of students. In turn, those students enliven their communities. Sean is a national leader in promoting applied baccalaureate degrees offered by community colleges to open doors for students who would not otherwise gain access to four-year degrees. His esteemed influence is evident in his service on the Board of the League for Innovation in the Community College, the Executive Board of the American Association of Community Colleges, and Chair of the Affiliated National Asian Pacific Islander Council. Congratulations, Sean. Jennifer Sukin is an innovative, forward-thinking, and data-driven leader who is making great strides as a leader in higher education. As university registrar, she has enhanced the Iowa State adventure for tens of thousands of Cyclone students. She has led university-wide initiatives that boost student retention and success, especially for students who are first-generation transfers or military veterans. Jennifer stands out among her peers. She is a frequent presenter, sharing her expertise at state and national meetings, including the American Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers. Congratulations, Jennifer. I would now like to introduce Beata Schmidtman, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Thank you, Dean Jolie. We are honoring these awardees amidst a remarkable time in history. In the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, the past year has been a time for innovation and reinvention in the classroom and in the laboratory and reimagining how we conduct research and learning. This year, our faculty and students conducted research with immediate impact in order to help the world battle a global pandemic developing reliable home tests for COVID-19, building a data infrastructure for COVID research, and creating statistical predictions used by the CDC. It's no coincidence that our distinguished alumni whom we are honoring today are innovators in their own fields, breaking scientific barriers in the research of human disease, protecting our nation's data, leading economic policy debate, and connecting our students and alumni with the community. As we launch our Student Innovation and Entrepreneurship Academy and our new Student Alumni Networking Platform, LAS Connect, it's the perfect time to let some of our brightest alumni shine. I am so pleased to introduce you to these outstanding LAS alumni. Lynette Hornung has been right where we've all needed her to be since graduating from Iowa State. Lynette's impressive career is grounded in security, more specifically data security. Lynette's extensive knowledge and expertise stem from many years of managing the security and privacy within enterprise systems for government institutions and private organizations. 
balancing the complex requirements and restraints of the federal government, including the U.S. Department of Defense, with the fluctuating needs of a federal workforce, Lynette has earned nationwide acclaim for her expertise and accomplishments. Her innovative endeavors in such a critical field for the nation, including work for the U.S. Department of Justice, U.S. Department of Agriculture, has earned her awards such as the National Science Foundation CyberCorp Scholarship for Service Award. She shares that knowledge and expertise freely, serving as a mentor to our students, helping them discover their career paths. Congratulations, Lynette. Rick Phillips' career mirrors the evolution of communications, marketing, and public relations industries. He built an expansive collection of skills and knowledge, enhancing the Central Iowa community through his work with the Greater Des Moines Chamber of Commerce Federation and the United Way of Central Iowa. He helped steer the strategic direction of publishing leader Meredith Corporation and Nationwide, an insurance and financial services juggernaut. He's well known for his leadership and hard work throughout his career and in his volunteer work. In fact, just a few years ago, it was thanks to his efforts that the inaugural Greenleaf Summit was created, an opportunity for academics and industry professionals to meet and learn from one another. His vision and leadership is a legacy of Greenleaf pride. Congratulations, Rick. Carla Kaler's contributions in biochemistry underscore the power of fundamental scientific discovery. In her lab at the University of California, Los Angeles, genetics meets biochemistry in an innovative approach to better understand disease. Her research earned her the honor of becoming fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and numerous others from distinguished organizations such as the American Heart Association and the Beckman Foundation. Her expertise is highly sought out and she serves in leadership and advisory roles for the National Institutes of Health, the United Mitochondrial Disease Foundation, and others. She even extends her talents to the youngest scholars, inspiring second graders to explore science when she teaches a hands-on zebrafish biology module. Congratulations, Carla. David Wheelock impacts the U.S. economy through research and professional service. As Senior Vice President and Senior Policy Advisor of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, he advises the bank director with data-driven research, helping the organization create sound monetary policy. He also serves in an administrative role for the bank's comprehensive data resource. His research, ranked in the top 3% of all economic researchers worldwide, continues to be highly cited and respected. He uses his career experiences as a faculty member and public servant to educate students at Iowa State, delivering guest lectures and career advice. Congratulations, David. Justin Hines is clearly a rising star in the field of biochemistry. His research impacts the world's understanding of human health, specifically diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. The scientific community has recognized this innovative research with funding from agencies such as the National Institutes of Health and the Corporation for Science Advancement, and with many awards of distinction. And he works just as hard advancing teaching and learning. From outreach to high school students on issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the STEM fields, to co-authoring one of the top biochemistry textbooks in the world, his passion for high-quality education and meaningful student experiences is truly inspiring. Congratulations, Justin. I would now like to introduce Dan Grooms, the Dr. Stephen G. Julesgaard, Dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine. Thank you, Dean Schmidtman. As a dean, there are lots of enjoyable aspects of my job. There are three, though, that stand out for me each and every year. The first is welcoming a new class into the professional program. Second is presiding over graduation of our professional and graduate students. And third is visiting with, learning about, and recognizing our outstanding alumni. Tonight, we honor five alumni who bring distinction to our college. They are five of over 7,000 graduates from the College of Veterinary Medicine who impact the lives of animals and people on a daily basis around the world. 
Our college alumni are leaders in their fields. They care for the well-being of your pets and livestock. They serve in public and human health roles. They protect the world's food supply. They educate future generations of veterinarians and scientists. They make discoveries that impact both humans and animals. Their impact is far-ranging. The alumni that we honor tonight represent the excellence of all of our proud graduates and the incredible impact that they have on society. It is a privilege to introduce our outstanding alumni. During veterinary school, Gary Borkowski took a class taught by Dr. Ron Flatt, professor of veterinary pathology and director of the Laboratory Animal Resources. That class led him to a laboratory animal clerkship that would set the path for a career in laboratory animal medicine, a career he chose to help improve people's health through research. His 30-year career has included positions in academia, the pharmaceutical industry, and government working at the Kennedy Space Center on the Space Shuttle Life Sciences missions. In every role, he has worked tirelessly to improve animal welfare. As the global director of ALAC International, Dr. Borkowski continues his work on a global stage, promoting the humane treatment of animals in science through voluntary accreditation programs. Laura Mulgard, the interim dean at the University of Minnesota's College of Veterinary Medicine, is a leader in veterinary education. Her many accomplishments in the field include leading the development of a competency-based veterinary education framework, including core competencies, milestones, and tools for workplace-based assessments. Dr. Mulgard has been invited to be part of an international group of human medical educators and enjoys both learning from their experiences and sharing the unique perspectives that veterinary education provides as part of the health professions. She is also recognized for her commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and has been particularly recognized for her work in supporting students with disabilities. As a small animal veterinarian, Dr. Charles Lemmy impacted the health and well-being of thousands of animals during his career. As a leader in organized veterinary medicine, he had a platform to impact the profession at the local, state, and national levels. Representing the American Veterinary Medical Association, he has worked with the USDA and the biologicals industry to develop practitioner-friendly labeling for veterinary biologics. He also represented the AVMA on issues involving FDA's Veterinary Adverse Drug Event Reporting System and prescription pet foods. His efforts are now focused on improving diversity, equity, and inclusion in the veterinary profession. It is certain that Dr. Lemmy's efforts have and will continue to positively impact the veterinary profession. Early in her career, Dr. Sherry Johnson has made her mark in veterinary medicine as an equine sports medicine and rehabilitation specialist. She has helped hundreds of horses recover from major orthopedic injuries and surgeries. Dr. Johnson says that each horse comes with a village of humans who love them, and she enjoys working with them to get their equine athletes on the road to recovery. Dr. Johnson works with human physical therapists to develop novel technologies for use in the horse that will change the paradigms that have limited exercise in physical therapy programs. Dr. Johnson serves as a mentor to young professionals, encouraging them to push past insecurities and to achieve their dreams. The words, it can't be done, has always been the motivation for Mike Roof to find a solution. During his 30-year career in pharmaceutical research and discovery, he found solutions that have had a significant global impact on animal health and disease prevention. The list of patents and vaccine licensures that he has been credited with is quite long. In reading them, I am struck by the fact that there are a lot of firsts. There are also a lot of largest and most solutions of any company. Today, the animal health industry can see the global impact of Dr. Roof's research efforts on the prevention of devastating animal health diseases. I now would like to introduce Steve Winfrey, Director of the Memorial Union. Thank you, Dean Grooms. The Memorial Union is just a few years shy of its 100-year anniversary, 
Each year, over 2 million visitors become a part of its grand history while partaking in over 12,000 events. The Memorial Union implements many of its own programs and events that develop student leadership and career readiness, as well as a sense of community. We are a multifaceted organization that provides more than event and ballroom space. We are the living room of campus that provides students the opportunities to engage in events showcasing art, culture, music, and global leadership, as well as diversity. It is the work of so many individuals that allows for this to happen. To honor these accomplishments, we hope to honor individuals who help us create memories that will last a lifetime. This award is named for Harold Pride, the first director of the Memorial Union. Harold's many years of work culminated in the values in which the award was created, including courage, service, and leadership. Our awardee exemplifies the same values and continues to be active in the Memorial Union. Ms. Kathy Svek worked in the Memorial Union for 32 years in various roles. During this time, Kathy created the annual Gold Star Hall Ceremony, which honors ISU veterans who made the ultimate sacrifice. She carefully researched the service and personal histories of the honorees by meticulously trying to find family members scattered across the U.S. Today, Kathy continues to volunteer on the Gold Star Hall Committee. Kathy also grew the Memorial Union Permanent Art Collection with dozens of works by significant artists from Iowa. She is an advocate for the arts and a mentor for other artists. The Memorial Union was more than a workplace for Kathy, it was her second home. Her reverence for the history, traditions, and the role of the Memorial Union on campus can be seen throughout the building today. Thank you, Kathy Speck. I would now like to introduce Jeff Johnson, the Laura and Russ Talbot Endowed President and CEO of the Alumni Association. Thank you, Steve. It is now my honor to share with you the remarkable accomplishments of our 2020 Iowa State University Alumni Association Award recipients. Each has done amazing work that further bolsters the excellence of our distinguished university. These individuals are state and global change makers who are being recognized today because they've demonstrated ways Iowa Staters are making communities, the state of Iowa, and the world a better place. Through their actions, they build upon the firm foundation of past alumni legacies and inspire future alumni and friends. Let's take a moment to recognize these ambassadors of Cyclone Excellence. If any person possesses the talent of understanding animals and advocating on their behalf, it is T. Robert Bashara. Robert has involved himself in organizations like the Doris Day Animal Foundation and causes that put animal welfare front and center. As we all know, veterinarians never simply treat animals. They also, and perhaps just as importantly, treat the people with whom those animals interact. There is no better example of this dual awareness than Robert. He has been described as a trusted bridge between the veterinary profession and the humane community. Robert, thank you for your contributions to your profession and to Iowa State University. Barry Peterson lives forever true pride every day and treats his volunteer efforts like a full-time job. Serving as the current president of the ISU Alumni Club of Dallas-Fort Worth, Barry puts in countless hours to increase the Iowa State brand in Texas and engage all alumni and friends, including Cyclone visitors in the area. Highlights of his tenure include the Cyclone Family Picnic, must attend Cyclone game watches and tailgate events, and the endowment of a scholarship to encourage students from North Texas to attend Iowa State. One nominator described Barry's dedication in this way. He is the type of cyclone whose fandom knows no bounds. That description truly sums up Barry's devotion to his university and his fellow cyclones. Barry, thank you for serving as such a driven and engaging ambassador, helping the association connect cyclones everywhere. Many consider Iowa State University's Campanile the most well-known icon on Central Campus and it is Tin Shi Tam who brings the Campanile to life. She has done so, in fact, for the last quarter century. Her ability to fill every corner of campus with strains of beautiful music and affect the moods 
adjust the attitudes, and lift the hearts of all who hear, that truly is a special gift, one nominator shared. By leading the charge to build a scale replica of the university landmark unveiled in 2019, Ten Shi has created an accessible way for students, alumni, and friends to share in the legacy of the Caroline. Thank you, Ten Shi, for serving faithfully as the keeper of the bells of Iowa State. After 130 years, the Iowa State Daily continues to lead with innovative journalism. This student-run newspaper is recognized each year with honors and has prepared countless alumni for outstanding careers. We know that media and journalists hold great power in influencing people's views and actions in our communities, one nominator penned. The Iowa State Daily has taken this power to responsibly advocate for their peers on campus and improve the Iowa State experience for all. To the many Iowa State Daily staffers and faculty advisors, thank you for your lasting legacy. Iowa State pride and helping others are synonymous to Brian Schmidt. Brian is president of the ISU Alumni Club of Kansas City, one of the Iowa State University Alumni Association's most active groups. When it comes to service, Brian blazes a path, says the nominator. He not only took the torch, but he used it to light the way for others, bringing in new, younger board members and hopefully future leaders. One of his crowning achievements is the creation of Size Crown Town Trivia Night. We expect that Brian and his fellow Kansas City, Iowa Staters will continue to connect Cyclones everywhere through awesome opportunities like this one. Brian, your Cyclone spirit is the reason why we honor you this evening. Thank you. Kelly Howard is an Iowa State innovator through and through. Growing her career from an entry level position with multinational, newly branded public relations firm 860 South to becoming the owner and CEO of this company in less than a decade, Kelly always makes time for current ISU students. She serves as president of the ISU Alumni Club in Los Angeles, a role that connects alumni and friends to each other and to the university. Iowa State is where I found my footing, Kelly says. I'm humbled and grateful for everything ISU taught me and the foundation it gave me to step forward into the next phase of my life. We are proud, Kelly, to call you a cyclone. George Burnett, and Martha Anderson are the epitome of cardinal and gold devotion. Each has deep ties to this university through bonds of family and friendship. Says the nominator, when considering alums with long and loyal service, there is no better example. Their generosity and university engagement spans decades and has touched nearly every part of the Iowa State campus and community. Indeed, their impact can be seen campus-wide from the Colleges of Engineering and Human Sciences to the Alumni Association and beyond. As devoted as they both are to Iowa State, their devotion to each other is also one of forever true nature. George and Martha, thank you for all you have meant to this university and all you have done to set a positive, inspiring example for Cyclones everywhere. Ruby Trice is a passionate philanthropist, an eager volunteer, and a true cyclone. Her service began while she was a student at Iowa State, and she hasn't slowed down since. Her cardinal and gold passion has been contagious, and the impact has been felt across campus, from the Ivy College of Business to the Alumni Association to scholarships and event involvement. When I think of Ruby, I think of a kind, intelligent, passionate person who enjoyed her Iowa State experience and only wants others to have the same positive experience that touched her heart during her time on campus, a nominator wrote. Ruby, thank you for your loyal and true service to your university. This concludes our honors and awards program. Thank you for joining us and congratulations to our 2020 class of ISU awardees. 
It is tradition for us to close this event with the singing of the bells of Iowa State. Even though we aren't in person, I encourage you all to join me in the singing of our alma mater.